right, so I've had some people ask about the uh, under the hood. Keep in mind, this is a race car. So everything that's been done to the car has been purpose built. So the bling factor has not been that uh, really a focus at all on the car. So even though it looks pretty badass, wide body and all that stuff, but under the hood, you'll see that there's a, there's actually, there's ducting here for the CSF radiator. And then there's additional ducting for the, that's the Garrett front mount intercooler. That was a custom built piece by EFAP. And then you'll see we've got the dual oil coolers. These are from Evolution Raceworks uh, in each side. Both of those are ducted as well, which will help uh, immensely with, uh, with all, the, all the temps. All right, what do we want to see? Uh, how about the fun stuff? We've got the turbo down here. Again, it's a bottom mount, so there's not a ton to see. So it's it's that was intentionally done as part of the packaging. You'll see a lot of N54 guys throw the big top mount up here awesome looks great really fun but uh it makes it a really hard to service the wastegate so you'll notice that the wastegate is really easy to get to right here uh and then also um on top of that it actually puts the weight down lower so you want your center of gravity to be low not all the way up here so any chance to get that to throw it down there we, we put it down there that being said it being a bottom mount it's definitely a tight fit so it's down there really good you'll see that this is a speed tech uh, single turbo kit. This is the. It's a divided mount. Uh, cast iron housing. It's divided. Really, really sweet. Um, what else? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you probably hear the fan that's running right now. So, because we are running an upgraded, uh, the upgraded steering rack that is just a quicker ratio from the uh, from the M3. Um, and, well, not even that. It's actually because we're running this massive tire. So because we have enormous tire up front, right now it's not super wide. It's a 275, which is still pretty pretty big. But this could run up to a 305 tire up in the front. And so when you're doing all that cranking and turning, um, there's a lot of guys that have talked about, even with their stock tires or a little wider tires, that they actually cook the, uh, the power steering fluid. So, long way of saying, we put in a Citrap uh, power steering cooler right here. And it's on a, uh, it's, it's got a fan, so it's actually ducted. You look through the, this here, you'll see that it actually pulls the air. Uh, we did a, a, a silly test with some smoke. We actually blew some smoke near this area here, and it actually sucks it right in. So really, really effective. That should definitely keep the, uh, the, the power steering uh, fluid temps down pretty, pretty good. What else? What else? Oh, so this is the... This is a pretty common uh, adjustment when you go single turbo. The, uh, the coolant tank is typically over on this side, but uh, because we run single turbo, it's a little tight over in this area. We convert it over to the 335D coolant tank. So that's a popular swap. We've got it all hard mounted in with the actual, uh, with the body here. Hard to see, but at the top here, uh, we've actually reinforced the shock mount towers. Now we don't have the bars tied in, if we actually converted this car over to like a standalone system, it'd be a bit easier to do that just because we are still running the stock ECU. And so you'd have to relocate this entire system and just be a big cluster. But if you ever run a, uh, a standalone system, um, you can get rid of this whole thing, relocate it, and then it'd be easy to tie the bars for cross bracing into the strut towers. We've got the M3 strut braces, whatever whatever those are, just if we convert it over. You'll notice that these shock towers themselves with the uh, with the struts, these, this needs an alignment right now. So you'll see these are kind of all out of whack, but it's running the ground control. Um, uh, yeah, camber plates, camber and case, uh, caster, I almost said case during. <laughs> camber and caster plates. Um, what else? Oh, and then yeah, this little tiny modification here. So this is running a tubular front structure. So the whole thing, everything is supported off of this tubular structure. So um, if you go all the way down underneath, which I can't get down to because this thing is so low, there's actually two uh, connection points where the arrow, uh, where the front diffuser, um, yeah, where the front, um, sorry, not diffuser, the, the front splitter, where that will actually connect on the bottom going into the tubular frame structure, fully adjustable. Uh, the headlights, these are just headlight blanks that are in there now that have the, uh, the ducting, one for the turbo, one for the power steering cooler, goes right in there. Hmm, what else? It's probably kind of hard to hear all this just because I'm talking. It's, it's uh, really loud with the car running. Yeah, we already looked into the car here briefly. Uh, 
yeah, it, I mean, it's it's got no creature comforts <laughs> at all, at all. So it's got a race seat, six-point harness, um, halo seat. It's a uh, Sparco Circuit 2 for my for my fat ass. Um, I'm 6'2", and uh, like 250, and it fits me. Uh, it's a little snug for me, so someone that's probably 200 pounds, it probably fits totally fine. Um, gosh, this thing is so dusty. But yeah, you'll see where it attaches there on the back. Uh, wide body kit, obviously WTCC wide body kit. Uh, it's got the hood vents. It's kind of a mix. It's actually the uh, the track spec, and then we picked up some other vents that we like more for the uh, for the sides that actually fit the profile of the car a little better. If we look around the back here. Uh, you'll see these guys right here. This is kind of unique, and I can't really get into the trunk with uh, with one hand holding the phone, hold, holding the camera. But these uh, these clevises, clevises, whatever you call them, uh, these clevises right here. These actually mount. Uh, it's a structure that was built directly into the frame rails inside the trunk, and then same on this side. And so that's actually going to be the mounting points for the uh, for the for the uprights that come up uh, for the wing itself. So uh, it's going to be. Uh, Oh, here we go. Sorry, this is a total mess right now. But this is actually the wing. This is a uh, uh, AJ Hartman carbon fiber. This is the single element wing. It can be upgraded to a dual element to actually fit that as well. Oh, and then you'll see here. Gosh, this is... Don't mind the, uh, the mess here. Oh, look at that. This is the enormous... This is a Klaus composite carbon fiber splitter. And then we have here, this is the uh, AJ Hartman, it's a modular carbon fiber rear diffuser. It's been uh, trimmed to fit the wheels in the back, the uh, added wheel width. And then EFAB also fabricated an entire, kind of elaborate and uh, kind of awesome aluminum uh, mounting solution here. So this normally when you get it from, uh, from AJ Hartman, it's just all the carbon fiber all put together. There's not really a mounting system. And so, uh, and so EFAB, anyways, they, they fabricated all the, the mounting system that you have there. And all of that will actually connect right down yonder. So it actually connects to those guys right here. So you'll kind of see, like I showed a little earlier, the mounting piece there. There's a mounting piece on the other side of the, uh, of the battery box. And then there's a couple of mounting points that are actually right up inside the, uh, the back of the bumper. Where is it? Right around here. And then there's one over here as well. Uh, if you're wondering what that little filter is, it's for the uh, the fuel tank. It's a the fuel fuel tank vent right up the rear. Oh, and then uh, I guess a, a part that some people like. I don't know. Uh, it's only been the most popular Instagram photo that I took out of all of the photos of where she's been staged and she looks beautiful. It was literally just a close-up photo of of this. That's it. Just like that. And that was the most popular Instagram photo that I've shared over the past whatever month or so. So, uh, I just need to take more pictures of side pipe apparently because we need more side pipe in our lives, which I would agree with. Oh, here's a little better view of the inside. Uh, so yeah, it's it's got a, a full-on cage, fire suppression system, um, CAE shifter, it's an aluminum dash, um, yeah, it's got the center the center net, you'll see at the shroff. Center net, it's got all the padding. So the car was originally built, um, the car was built to compete in a few different types of series. The idea, when we first started building it, mind you, this was kind of before I had kids, uh, was to actually race this in Pikes Peak. And that may not be far off, I don't know, uh, that's possible, but when, uh, when I, when we originally started building it or with uh, with EFAB, we kind of gave them that that idea in mind. Hey, make this thing as safe as possible. So if we ever wanted to take it to Pikes Peak, we're good to go. And so many of you will see the cage, and it's it's not a uh, a minimal cage. I mean, it's got a lot of roof protection. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's overbuilt for the safety purposes for that purpose. Could you take out some of the bars? I suppose if you wanted to light the car up. But again, it was built with Pikes Peak in mind to make this thing as safe as possible. Just go watch that Evo uh, go over the cliff at Devil's Playground and that's all you need to see with that. So that was the idea with this. But um, yeah, the, 
the car has been built to uh, to be able to run there or really anywhere else as well. So that covers it. I just covered 10 minutes of talking about the car <laughs> at length. Um, what else? GPS. That's part of the uh, part of the AIM dash system. It's running uh, MCS single adjustable coilovers in the rear. Well, not in the rear. Uh, all around. It's got solid mounts everywhere. I mean, it's got it's like aluminum mounts everywhere. Um, adjustable. It's like rogue engineering. Adjustable camber caster, uh, toe arms, all of that stuff. So it's super adjustable everywhere. Every part that's been worth upgrading to an M3. Uh, has been done. There are many parts that have been upgraded beyond what you would even want an M3 part for. So, again, the parts that were worth upgrading to an M3, like the differential, some of the control arms, the steering rack, that type of stuff, that's awesome. Uh, we did all of that. And then uh, and then for a lot of it with the adjustable, the adjustable suspension components going to a true coilover, uh, the brakes themselves are big old... Oh, I didn't even hit on that. Yeah, the brakes... They're big old massive stop tech trophies. Oh, here you go. Yeah, stop tech trophies that are in there. Um, we also have a, it's running PFC 08 pads, which is a good endurance pad. So you're trying to go set the hot lap, which everybody seems to be focused on, but the reality is once you start getting into race car ownership, if you're not trying to compete at the highest, highest, highest level, you just want to go out there and let her rip and have a good time. Uh, you want to have parts uh, components that are going to last and so with the PFC pads that was the design uh, or the intent of putting those on there is to get a good quality pad that's going to uh, that's going to last for a good amount of time have had really good success with that 08 pad however uh, I do have a, a several sets of uh, they're used but several sets of other PFC compounds so 01s and 11s I believe so anyways looking at this car in person I will tell you right now it is bad ass absolutely badass i don't know if it is conveyed via video like this whole situation uh unlike anything you see it actually kind of reminds me of some of the um oh man who is it who are those guys some of the designer guys on instagram yasid design and um uh, the kazaa sorry i'm totally pronouncing it wrong but some of their designs where they have like the uh like the Porsche 917 kind of open wheel rear end or some of the, the Lambos that have the kind of the bumper removed. But anyways, it's a similar thing. <laughs> it's freaking nuts. <laughs> oh yeah, look at her. Glorious. And as you can hear, she's been running for the, this whole time and she's awesome. This thing is freaking badass.